yeah, let's get this, let's get this started. Um, so the business of hustling, tools to help you get ahead of the game. This is basically what we're going to be talking about today. My name's Amber Torrealba. I'm a creative director, filmmaker, and social media influencer. I've been doing this for about seven years. And uh, for the most part, it's been a crazy journey for me. There's ups and downs. You never really know what's going to happen, but it's just kind of one of those things that you have to work through. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story as well. So I grew up in Florida. I got my degree at UCF. I worked in digital media and marketing. And so from that background, I actually ended up you know, doing the normal corporate life, working at Radio Shack. I was a corporate manager for Radio Shack for seven years. So I was basically just working the nine to five job, going to work every day, just getting stuck in my box and kind of just you know, going about that life out of college where I was like, all right, well, this is you know, what you do. You just go to work and you try and progress in your career. So after that, I kind of really allowed me to find my passion, essentially, because, you know, you're working every day towards something you really don't feel like you're progressing at or you, it really speaks to your truth. So that gives you kind of that fuel and that ambition to really look elsewhere. So alongside of working a normal corporate job, I started to work on videos and I started to work on photography and things that I loved on the side. And the craziest thing about that is, is it really led me to find my passion and led me to do what I do now. And that's making videos. And a uh, fun fact about me is also I'm a, a world champion skimboarder. So I travel the world. And if any of you don't know what skimboarding is, that's OK. Uh, a lot of people don't know what skimboarding is. It's uh, basically surfing without a fin. So I'm out there um, pretty much trying not to ruin my body every day at the same time is come up here and make sure I can present for you guys because I'm always practicing and things like that. But that's the business of it. That's the hustle of it is basically you have to live your normal life. You have to get out there and do what you love, but you have to attend to your everyday things and your everyday needs. And that's what we, I wanted to talk about as well today. So going on from um, basically my process and how I got to where I am today, I have some key and some core foundations that have really led me to get there. And I feel like that's important for everybody's process. Everybody has their own life and their own things that they have to get through. So you really have to find that process and you have to find something that works for you. And for me, that was always balance, creativity, and community. Having balance with the things that matter in my life. And for me, I don't have a, I don't have a kid at home, and so I'm not a mom in that way. But for me, I'm a mom for my dog. So if any of you have animals, you know how that goes. You always have to worry about the animals or you have to worry about the kids. You have to worry about your normal day-to-day -day life. So learning balance is big and creativity because there's so many of us out there and we're all out there trying to really be seen, whether that's for our brand or for our own personal things that we're doing in life. So finding that creativity, learning who you are is the biggest thing and using your creativity. And that's the greatest part about all of us being unique is that we all have something different to offer each other. And that's where community comes into play, is basically using your community, using your industry and the people around you to really help thrive and build everybody up because we're all trying to grow and we're all working on something. Everybody's going through something that you might not know. They may be smiling today, but they have something deep that's heavy on them that day. And the coolest thing is, is we keep building each other up whether it's learning in video or anything that you're working on for your, band or your brand or your business, that's how we're all going to win. So those are my, a couple of my core foundations to the process of um, basically how I've gotten to where I am today. But today you'll learn about your brand story and how to really tell that in uh, different ways that I do that as well. Uh, branding and authenticity, which is huge. We all know in 2019, there's so much media out there, so much saturation. We're constantly filling our heads with things and ads and what is authentic, what, what is going to really speak to us. And, you know, people see right through the fakeness nowadays. There's so much of it out there. So we'll talk more about that. Social media and how to stand out. Social media is huge. As we all know, that's how we kind of stay connected. That may have been how you found out about this presentation today. So social media is, is the big one there. And then finding balance, as we mentioned, and staying ahead of the game. One of the key things um, to any brand or any business is really how to stay ahead, how to anticipate, how to be on top of who you are and who, who your brand is and where you need to go to move forward, because it's always a progression. So your brand story, how are you telling yours? We're all telling ours in a different way, right? Whether that's through video, whether that's through photography, whether that's out there in your community, hands-on, direct with the people that you work with every day. We all tell our story in a different way, and I think it's super important to really focus on that because a lot of people, when they're building anything from a brand to anything that message that you're trying to get out, it's like, where do you start? 
so basically how I've started to do that is through video work. And that's telling my story through Premiere Rush. And Premiere Rush has allowed me to not only focus on building videos, but doing that anywhere that I am. And basically it's the first all-in-one cross-device video editing app that makes creating and sharing online easier and better than ever. So we'll get more into Rush and why Adobe has created this awesome app for you guys if you've never edited before, even if you are editing now and you know a ton about editing. It's just another way for it to help you while you're on the go, to help you while you're getting things done, and to really get everything out there in that churning media days that we have now. Everybody wants things right now relevant. Relevancy is key. So this is another way that I kind of work on that through Rush. Breaking it down, editing on the go, like I was just saying, being able to edit on your phone nowadays is insane. We do everything on our phones, right? But the biggest thing about when you're at a conference or you're at, you know, if, if your brand is out there telling a story throughout the day or putting together a highlight reel, being able to do that as fast as possible and giving your audience that, you know, that full satisfaction right away, it's huge. So being able to edit on the go and having that ease of use. Basically, back in the day, we would have to, you know, find somebody that's a video editor and pay them thousands and thousands of dollars to put something together on a program that you probably couldn't even afford on a computer that probably didn't even do it. And the greatest thing that we should take advantage of today is the fact that you do have a phone that can do the exact same thing. And that's what's really cool about feeling more empowered. And if you ever feel like you're in this creative block, if you ever feel that you're like, oh man, well, well, this person's just putting out videos all the time and I just, I don't have the time for that. We're gonna talk more about that because it's right on your phone and it's all about time management and things that you can do to kind of really get past those moments. So branding and layers and things like that that I was talking about, these are all available to do with Rush. So we can go from a big editing software that you think seems very complicated to breaking it down simply and getting it done. So this is just a quick little demo uh, that I've put together. As you can see here, of, I'm basically editing my logo. I'm basically editing my timeline is what we call it. So where to start is always the biggest question. It's like I have all these clips or I have these things that I captured throughout my day if you're trying to tell your story. And it's how do you put it together? How do I put all these clips and send it out there to someone? And that's through a timeline. If you've never seen a timeline before, this is kind of basically what it looks like. You're looking at your clips here along where you would put them on a timeline. And the biggest thing is, is some people have seen this so many, so many times, and it looks kind of like just a bunch of bars. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody edit or you do edit yourself. It can be intimidating at first when you open it up. So Rush is kind of breaking it down to make it that much easier for you to see your thumbnails, to see your blocks and different ways that you've put your clips in order to start building your story. So this software has basically allowed you to just take one, two, three, four clips, whatever you need, start to put them together, and really just start to build that story and get your work started. So we'll get back into to Rush and different things that you can do with it. But speaking more on just branding and authenticity, how I was speaking on the fact that in 2019, there's just so much saturation out there. Everywhere you scroll, you're seeing an ad for, if you see an ad for makeup, you probably scroll three more times, you probably see a different brand for the same thing that they made it. And maybe that brand copied that other brand and it's like the same product. So you see that all the time nowadays. And authenticity is a one way to kind of tackle that. So going more into like growing with, with content. You hear so much that content is king, content is king, and some people are like, well, how, how do I even put so much content out there? Like, what, what do people wanna see and why do I gotta, you know, every single day? And there's people out there that'll say, you know, put 10 pieces of content out there every single day and you'll see more results. Whether it's content that you feel comfortable with or it's content that you've put so much time into. What eventually what your audience needs to see is just see you. And that's the biggest thing that is hard to overcome is because we overthink this a lot, right? We're like, oh, is this perfect? Is this the way that I want to put it out? Is this the way that I want to be seen? And what a lot of the ways that people are tackling, you know, growing their brand or getting, you know, those creative blocks in 2019 is to kind of take a step back and stop overthinking it. Be who you are and work towards what you want to work towards and that will come naturally in the future. So for the most part, if you're out there, you know, if you're, if you're working towards, for me personally, you know, I, I like to teach people how to skimboard. I like to teach people how to edit. I like to teach people just women empowerment through what I do naturally. And if I was somebody else or I tried to be somebody else, I would be putting so much time and effort into telling my story in a different way that's not me that these people probably wouldn't even catch on. 
So what you do, if you just do it to the best of your ability to show and put out there your passion, as, and that's putting content out there and showing and always reaching for your audience, they're gonna see that more than the amount of work that you probably put in to make it perfect. And that's the biggest thing that we have to kind of step back. And a lot of times we ask ourselves, well, do I have the skill to get this done? Yes, you have the skill to get this done, but sometimes you kind of overthink it and you don't even put it out there and let people see. And I find myself doing that with editing every once in a while. It's like, when is the video actually done? You know, when am I finally happy with it? And eventually I have to take myself away from that, just be real and be like, well, my audience wants to see this. My audience needs to see this. And that's where you can really help your brand get over and pass those moments where you feel like, well, maybe I'm not trending on Instagram anymore. Maybe I've been stuck at 30,000 followers for a long time, or maybe I've been stuck at 50,000 followers for a long time. Whether it comes down to anything, if you hit that block, or if you just really need to continue to grow, even if you're on a good flow, think about that and put yourself in the other person's shoes. And that's where you'll really get past those moments where they're like, they just wanna see you. They wanna see what's real, because eventually that'll come out. You know, whether you're at a conference, whether you're at, you know, in person, you're doing workshops or anything with people, that's where that will come out. And so that's important to really show your brand and the true story of it because they'll follow that. And so branding essentially is the biggest thing that we always see everywhere. We see logos, we see how people start to build their brand as far as like an image and a style. And you can also do that in Rush as well. So these are just different things that you can keep in mind as far as starting to brand yourself if you haven't already with the businesses that you've been working with or if you have a brand of your own. Using logos and text overlays, text and captions, and just building a style. How to actually do that in Rush is basically going to be laid out for you on your right-hand side. The greatest thing about doing this on, this is now, this is a computer uh, demo. So this is how it would look like on your computer if I was just walking up and I was basically looking over and I wanted to show my logo. I would basically make it pop up right there. Now the coolest thing about how you see this as a normal editing layout, this can be done perfectly on your iPhone as well. And being able to brand right, right there on the spot and not having to take it into the computer is gonna be able to allow you to put those, that content out faster as well. So anything that you're working on, branding it is putting it, you know, putting your brand out there in the eyes of everyone and being able to really relate with that every single time they see your work. But making a style, doing, so you can see here that I'm basically editing like a caption and going in there and changing, like if you're, if you're doing a video about hair, if you're doing a video about your, your brand or like anything that you teach for, I've, I've done even a video like life hacks about how to walk my dog when I'm skateboarding with my dog. You can just make a title right there. And different things like that as far as making your videos can really, really, really help you just keep people on track and build your story as well. So how many of you actually like edit kind of consistently or just cool? You've tried editing? Okay, awesome. So you probably know a lot about this kind of thing. It's like important, you know, putting in your logo, putting in, telling the story through visuals, because a lot of us also, when we're on our phones, we're not really, have our, we don't have our, our sound on either, right? You're, you wake up in the morning, you're kind of doing your thing, you may be on your phone watching YouTube videos or something, or just trying to catch up from the day. And the biggest thing about that is, is you can always keep in mind your audience and who you're trying to speak to, because if you, for me, if I'm out there and I'm trying to reach young, a younger crowd, for instance, I have to know that they're gonna be in school all day and they're not gonna be on their phones during the right period of time. So like I can't be posting or I can't be trying to reach out with sound or different things and captions. I have to use the right methods to reach out to the right people. So whether you're creating a commercial or anything that you need for your brand or for telling your story, this is another cool way to get in there and basically add your logos and add your captions. All right, getting back to social media, how to stand out. I mean, this is the biggest thing that we all talk about. Social media doesn't necessarily run our lives, but you can't really get away from it. It's, it's pretty much everywhere. Everybody has their phone out, everybody's checking. I mean, has anybody gone one day without checking their Instagram or their Facebook in the last week? If you have, raise your hand. And there, so, I mean, it's tough, like, right? You, you almost have to, like, put, on stand, put yourself on standby, put a caption. Sorry, I'll be back in a week, you know? Otherwise, people are like, Where's that person? Have they, uh, do they not have a brand anymore? Oh, how are you? Like, like yeah, I still exist. But like, <laughs> so it's just one of those things like 
where it, does your audience live? And always we're focusing on like Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and things that we hear all the time. But there's another aspect that's coming up and like I'm talking about 2019 and I'm talking about relevancy and the craziest thing is, is things are changing kind of again and you kind of have to always keep up with that. So Instagram we know is kind of like the big dog for a lot of things right now and you have YouTube also for, for vlogging and the longer style videos. But we have the new ones that are coming in like TikTok. It might not be new to some of you, but if you haven't heard of it yet, it's blowing up and it's another thing that, you know, if you have a younger audience, they might be on TikTok and you're wondering why your Instagram followers are going down or you're wondering why you're not gaining YouTube subscribers. So it's kind of one of those things to kind of keep an open mind and always keep your perspective in the eyes of whoever is, could be watching your media. So LinkedIn is another one. I think LinkedIn has been around for a really long time. That's just always been in the back of my mind. Like, I think when I was in college in 2011, they were like, make your LinkedIn profile one time. And they were like, oh, you did it? Cool. Never checked it, you know, <laughs> never went back to it. And now all of a sudden, LinkedIn is like huge. People are seeing things first on LinkedIn sometimes. They're seeing things first on TikTok. You're getting TikTok shares directly to Instagram. And the biggest thing is, is be on top of that and don't be afraid of these new platforms because change is inevitable. We're going to face the fact that we're, we've been putting all this time and effort into maybe YouTube or Instagram. And then in 2025, not even TikTok or LinkedIn could take over. So being prepared for anything is the biggest thing about social media is change. So using different types of media and content is a way to always kind of keep working yourself towards how to create for the audience you're trying to reach towards, whether that's short videos, long videos, anything like that. And getting into that more like directly, you can see here how there's multiple different ways to kind of show the same type of content. And to do that, you're basically putting out your content in the native way that the platform wants to present to the user because that gives your user the most native experience and shows them that you care, right? So let's say you made a video and you're like, well, I made my first edit and it's really bad. But let's say that you're putting those con that content out you know, five times a week. Your, your audience is going to see that you care. And the biggest thing about caring is paying attention to what they want to watch on the platform that they're watching on. And so you have here on YouTube where you'd want to make a caption and a title and actually give them that experience as if they were to click on a, a Netflix video. Because, I mean, you probably are scrolling through Netflix and you're like, oh, this movie looks good. This one, well, that, well that's a weird title. Um, <laughs> and you just, you kind of pick like that. And there's just so much media out there. We have to be real with ourselves and know that we are battling with so much other content out there and we're all trying to find our way. And we gotta work towards that in some unique way and, and finding your style and using your captions, building your branding like this is definitely the way to get started. And really showing your audience that you care because you're making content the way they are there to see it. Because we don't go to Netflix or we don't go to these other platforms to watch vertical videos. Because then our TV, why do we just buy this huge widescreen TV? And that's the same thing people are thinking when they're on Instagram or TikTok and they see a video that's not made for their aspect ratio or not made for that platform. So it's just something to keep in mind to really, if you ever felt like, hey, well, like I, I just, I've been making this content and I'm just really not getting far in certain areas, kind of take that into consideration. See what, what your audience is really needing and what, what, where they're watching, because they may be on a different platform than you think. And these are just an example of some of the aspect ratios and how much they can change. Like YouTube being 16 by nine, but now, you know, next year they may change. They may offer 4K, they may offer 2K, they may offer like different things that are gonna be something that you have to take, keep into mind. The, uh, the Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, these are all just different examples. If you guys wanna take a picture, anything that helps you as well, these are just different duration limits and things that you can keep in mind when you're making an Instagram video, when you're making a Facebook video and you're editing. But yeah, I think that the biggest thing with aspect ratios is kind of just getting used to also editing in that way. And I'll be able to show you guys how to do that as well with Rush. So how do I do a landscape to a portrait? This is the greatest thing about being on your iPhone and not having to go to your computer. Because let's say you took 
of video on your iPhone and you're going to have it in portrait mode, you have to switch it to square or you have to switch it to landscape. Rush allows you to do that as well. You're able to take a clip, literally just click on it and drag it to fit it however you want it. And that helps so, so much with being your user the best experience that they can have to actually experience your content. The message that you, the amount of work that you put in to make your message clear is not going to be hindered by just the way that you presented it. And that's one of the, one of the biggest key things that is happening right now is that we all have a message to put out and there's so many different obstacles in our way to put it out and we have to work past that to show our audience that we're here, we're right now, we're present. So providing, providing value for your audience means almost so much more now because we can make videos and we're creating content that we're stoked on, right? But possibly we've been putting them out there for a while. So if you have a YouTube vlogging channel, let's say you've been vlogging and you've done episodes for 10 episodes and it's just been following your life, right? You've, you kind of have like a, a little script and this and that. You've been, you know, one episode maybe about your hometown, one episode maybe about this, and then you start to see things fall off. What can happen there, and for some businesses and brands that I've seen with brands that I've helped build in the past, is they don't realize they could be telling the same story over and over again in a different way, instead of growing on that story and offering value to their audience. So what I've said before to some people that have maybe tried vlogging is maybe try doing a behind the scenes of what it takes to put into your vlog. Maybe try doing a tutorial. Think outside of the box of what you would need to watch after you've watched a lot of your content. And a lot of people, when they start to take themselves out of the content that they're like, oh, well, I, I really like making these vlogs because it, I get stoked to watch them. Well, a lot of those people are j just so stoked that they need more, and then they start to want more. And that's how we can really pull ourselves out of that, that mindset is basically taking what you already know and that you're giving them and adding more, more value to it. And YouTube and Instagram and all of these platforms were there not always just to teach, but really provide value. So it's not like you have to be a teacher and we all have to just, oh, well, this is what I do. And I put, you know, I, for me, I put videos out there for skimboarding. I'm not necessarily putting videos out there to teach everybody how to skimboard, but the way that I present it could possibly do that exact, that exact thing. And we have to basically relate with our audience, ask questions, and always engage. Community is huge, especially on Instagram and, and YouTube. If you're not engaging with your audience, figuring out what they want, figuring out what they need, and working towards that, you, you're kind of missing that big, big portion of your brand that you can really, really grow. Because there's so much more to a brand nowadays. Before branding, you, you were kind of so far away from it, right? Like you'd see a commercial on the Super Bowl, or, and you'd be like, wow such a sick commercial and then like it wouldn't be talked about for a while. Now you see a commercial in the Super Bowl, you probably forgot it because there was a million other commercials that were already happening <laughs> at the exact same moment because it's just, there's just so much out there. So really just getting back to that perspective. Perspective is literally everything when it comes to editing, when it comes to photography, when it comes to just standing out. That's how we do it with content is taking your perspective and really broadening that. Don't get too narrow and make your own style. And talking about style, this is basically how we can build your own style, whether it be for, you know, if you have a very bubbly style brand or if you have a very, like, dark brand, feel, feel that, show that. Let your audience know that this is the feeling that you want to put out there. And you can do that through colors. You can do that through fonts. We can, you can do that through branding, kind of like we talked about logos. You can do that through all of these things. But the key thing is, is to keep it simple to something that they can understand. Because even though you may know a lot about your brand and your topic or anything that you're really trying to put out there, you have to remember that your audience might not know as much and you're bringing them along with your story. The more you can bring your audience along with your story, the more they're going to be connected to you. And just like I was saying about the, the actual commercials and the way that we used to see brands, now we're very, very much connected with brands. We know exactly their voice. We know exactly what they're post posting on Twitter, probably up into the minute. And if they didn't post on Twitter up into that minute, you're probably wondering if they're even a good brand because why, why isn't somebody posting on Twitter? <laughs> you know, why isn't it right now happening right then? So these are just things to think about and just being consistent. Like I was saying with uploading content, consistency is really key, just letting people know that you're there. And getting into more ways to create that style, 
Color correction is huge. This is just a picture of me that I took raw from a screenshot from a video, and you can see how we've enhanced it. And you can just create that feel. So if you're not looking for that dark feel and you're really trying to bring something out of your video and your content, remember the color in correction is everything. And we'll get into how we can actually do that in Rush, and you can use these tools with Adobe Rush to make that happen, whether it be exposure, temperature, and saturation. So with color, as you, this video here is going to be playing while I'm speaking about it. Everything on the right-hand side here in Adobe Rush allows you to kind of take those tools and put them into action. So if you're out there and you took a video on your iPhone and you're like, wow, this is, you know, I really wish I had a, a great camera because, you know, we all start from somewhere. We might not all have the best camera on us right now. I'm not, I'm not carrying around a DSLR, but this epic moment is happening and I need to capture it on my iPhone. One thing that you can do is just bring it into Rush and color correct it, make it feel closer to what you need it to be. And don't feel like you're limited just because you had to use the iPhone. There's always ways to go about correcting that and making it look better than it is. And people can see that too. They'll be able to see like, oh wow, that was taken on an iPhone? Yeah, but you, you color correct it and you put your time into it. And that's another way to show that you're really focusing on your brand and working towards those ideas. So the filters itself are actually built into Rush. You can put a cinematic filter, you can put a vivid filter, you can put many different things onto these clips and you can make them feel so much more alive. You can change the intensity of them in Rush. You can actually take your own preset. So if you really, really like seeing like a lot of contrast, if you really like that bright feel, you can create that preset and you never really have to go back into it and recreate it again. You can just drag and drop it right over and then you have your color preset right onto your project every single time. It's another way to save time because we're all busy. We're all out there like, how am I going to put out 10 pieces of content a day? And that doesn't have to be, you know, 10 videos. It doesn't have to be this and that. But it could be a story. It could be a message. It could be just some way to reach out to your audience and speak. And color is a great, great way to really keep that branding and keep that feel and really keep your brand feeling alive. Transitions is one of my favorite things. Um, some of my videos, I like to just kind of trip people up, essentially, you know. You've seen probably travel videos where, you know, they may be in their hotel room and they go to dive onto their bed and they just dove into the ocean. That's called like a transition. So if you've edited a lot, you know tons and tons about transitions. It's everything that you have to do between a clip. So if you're putting your clips onto a timeline that we talked about, they kind of just cut between each clip, every clip, and it could get boring, right? It could just, all right, next clip, next clip. So transitions is a different way to really create your style, create your flow, and make your edit feel more alive. You can use cuts, you can use cross dissolves, you can use fades, or you can really just get creative with how you can build your brand with your logos. So as you can see here, I basically faded in my logo onto this drone clip that we took out in California. And it gives it that feel instead of that punchy, I want, I want to make my audience feel more like flowy. So that's why I use my fade-ins, or if you want to really like, just cut to it. Do, just do like a, like a, like a fade to black, because sometimes people like to edit on a beat and edit on different things like that. So transitions are a great way to really just build your story in a more flowy way and build your style throughout. Audio is another thing. Audio is huge, and a lot of times, although we don't always have audio in our videos when we're watching, because our sound's off and things like that, Audio can basically make or break a video sometimes. If you have very suspenseful music to somebody walking down a street, you think something's gonna happen. <laughs> you're like, okay, is somebody gonna jump out and like attack this person? But if you have really happy music, you're like, oh, he's having a nice day. <laughs> so it's basically like audio can completely change just any clip that you have out there. And adding music, creating a feeling is really everything in, when it comes to branding, when it comes to giving your audience that feel that you're really trying to recreate. So using sound effects within Rush, the greatest thing about it is they have so many different things built in there for you as well. So you don't have to go looking and searching, well, I, want to, I didn't capture that audio, well, maybe there's a really funny moment of, of a dog and you know, walking and things like that. You can recreate those sounds yourself as well. So don't feel too limited by anything that you use. But like I said, saying before, I started on an iPhone and for the most part, I probably for 
two years, I never had another cameraman or I never had another camerawoman or anyone to work with. I basically had to carry around my iPhone, find any mount that I could to like film myself, put it on a trash can, walk past it, anything. When I was traveling around the world, making videos by myself essentially, and audio and transitions and these titles and things like that, they kind of saved me because I didn't have those people to really pull myself together and make these feelings and seeing all these crews and I'm like, well, how do I do this? And it really just comes down to your creativity and editing and how you do it in post-production, how you really use what you had in your mind to make what you want, even though you felt like you didn't have the tools originally to do it. And this software gives you those tools in a very quick and easy way. So another thing we all know about is copyright guidelines probably. You've probably run into them on YouTube, Instagram. It's, it's tough because finding music is another thing. Just wanted to like keep that in mind for everybody out there. There are some things that you know we do have restrictions on. You know we, we probably can't use a Post Malone song um, <laughs> for the entire vlog and not get it flagged by YouTube. So things like that. Rush also allows you to be able to kind of find music and, and use them in here. And we and I, if also you can come talk to me after this if you need ideas on where to find your music and different like websites and things like that to get that. Voiceovers as well are huge, trying to get your message out there. Depending on your brand, you may not always want to focus on visuals. You may want to focus on doing a voiceover and telling that message. And that's important and very key to getting your video together as well. Speed is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things about Rush and the latest update. Speed is, it changes everything about the vibe of your video. So, Basically, being able to use slow motion, and I don't know if a lot of you know with your iPhones now, if you don't have a really high-end camera, on your iPhones, you can actually record in slow-mo. It may not play back in slow-mo when you're recording on your normal video camera, not in your slow-mo mode, but your normal video camera mode. You can go into your settings, and you can actually change your iPhone on most iPhones to like 4K 60. You can change it to 60 at, one, at 1080. And what that 60 means is that when you're editing on a timeline for 30 frames per second and you're recording in 60, that allows you to slow it down half speed because you're recording on your iPhone that much faster. The coolest part about that is you can see where I'm running with my dog, basically walking my dog on my skateboard. Makes it easier for me, more fun. <laughs> but this right here is another way to basically take that moment and make it feel more vibey in a sense instead of going really fast and you can't really understand what's going on in a moment, especially if you're cutting the music, using speed and control is so, so vital to any type of story you're trying to tell, any type of video that you're trying to put out. And the greatest thing about Rush is that it actually allows you to edit the speed, not only for the entire clip, but for different portions of the clip and speed ramp into it. You guys have probably seen some videos where it's like going really, really slow and then all of a sudden it's real fast. And it doesn't do it abruptly. It does it at a nice little speed ramp. And Rush allows you to do this right on your phone as well. It's huge for any sort of clip that you're trying to edit. There's not many programs out there that I think even allow this to be possible. So this has pretty much changed everything about me being out and about, being able to edit, being able to get that vibe that I'm trying to get out of these videos while using Rush right on my phone. And that's my crazy dog. <laughs> um, sharing is the biggest thing, like we talked about. How to upload directly from Rush. This also is another time-saving option. So you don't have to go into YouTube, Instagram separately and just upload it on there. You can upload it right from your program. You can type in your playlist. You can type in your title, your description right onto Rush as you can see, and you can even change your privacy from public to private, however you'd like to share it, depending on if you're working on it for your clients or you're working on it for your audience. It's right there. You'll be able to add in hashtags, t uh, keywords, and discoverability. The biggest thing about hashtags and, key and keywords and things in YouTube is if you're not actually putting those in there, you're kind of losing out on your SEO. And if you've never heard about SEO, it's basically how everybody kind of uses the search engine and how they find things. If you type in how to, there'll probably be the first 
biggest videos that have great SEO and keywords will pop up because they've kind of taken that extra time to where if they're making a video about food, they've probably put in as keywords, food, dinner, how to make food, how to this, how to that. Just different things that your audience would search for and then basically find your video. So it's the whole marketing aspect of it. Now you've made this great creation and you kind of have to make sure that it's seen. And then you have to take that extra step and Rush allows you to do that right there in the app, right before you share it to YouTube or anywhere else that you need to share it to. Posting is the hardest part about, I would say, getting into when you would want to actually post and what times that you need to post, as we were talking about before with kids in school or if, you have, if you're reaching out to you know, someone for a dinner recipe, different times that you would want to post. So how often do you post and when to post is always something that you're going to continuously have to try with your audience. It's not to say that if you post at the wrong time, things aren't going to do well, but you want to maximize on those opportunities. So really trying to focus on that, see what's working, see what's not working and scheduling and consistency. The biggest thing about YouTube is when people can really look forward to something, they're gonna be that much more excited about it. So basically when you have consistency, it allows your audience to be able to look forward towards that and be able to be excited. They know that they're gonna be able to receive another episode or another tip or another tutorial and anything that you're making on your videos out there as long as you have consistency and giving them that schedule, giving them that structure to be able to follow you in that way. Because they're all looking to follow for a reason. We don't want to push that follow button just to say that, oh, you have another follower, you're cool, follow. They actually want to follow something. They, they don't want more media in their whole capsule of scroll, scroll, scroll. We have so much of it already. We're no longer in that age where we're just trying to put stuff out there. We're trying to put valuable things out there. So being consistent is really huge and using a catchy thumbnail. So this is basically an example of some thumbnails that I used um, on my personal uh, YouTube. And doing what you love is more of, you know, it's a personal story for me. It's a, a voiceover video that I made. So that's why you'll see a picture of more of myself. Whereas progression, it's more of, it's an uplifting photo. It's a, video, it's a photo that kind of shows what the video feel is about. Progression, meaning I'm feeling in this video, it kind of gives that vibe of like, all right, done for the day progress. So just kind of think about those things. Think about every little aspect that can really gain a better experience for your users and your audience. And finding balance. One of the key things that we were speaking about before, real life is, it's there and it's never going to go away. And we have to find basically happiness in our process of that because your life, it goes along with your brand. It goes along with anything that you're trying to do and we have to be honest with ourselves about that. And hustling is not just about working all the time and burning ourselves out and not being happy with what we do. Hustling is about working smarter and not too hard because we learn more in those moments. And being able to work with what you got is pretty much everything in that. So if you really feel that you're just trying to get a message out there, don't feel like you have to buy you know, this three, $4,000 camera that, you know, your friend's doing the exact same thing or your colleague or you see another brand doing. Because sometimes that's not your process. That's not the way that you get there because everybody has their story to tell and they may have a different story to get you there. The coolest thing that I can always say is that I came from making videos on iPhones because I was there at one point where I had no idea what I was doing. I look back at my videos and I'm like, wow, that was terrible. <laughs> I can't even barely like watch the whole thing. And the cool thing about that is, is you've learned every step of the way and you can struggle and say you've struggled and you can relate to your audience in that way. Because a lot of them, the ones you're trying to reach out to, depending on what you're putting out there and what you actually are marketing, they want to be able to relate to you. And having those stories and being able to come from ground zero is huge. So working with what you got is basically just being honest with yourself. Just because you don't have a great camera, don't not put out that video tomorrow. Find a way to do it. Find a friend, find your phone, find a way to just mess around on Rush and see if you can put something together. Because that's gonna be more valuable in the end to you, is really working through those moments and struggles, working through any sort of failures that you have, putting out those videos so that you can actually look back and be like, wow, 
that was a pretty bad video, but I feel really good about my videos now because I just saw that. <laughs> so being able to look back on, on things and your progression, it's really going to move that needle for you and really help you push and build your brands, build your own personal opportunities for yourself. It's a lifestyle change. It's huge. Basically, if you want to put out content all the time, if you want to be making videos all the time, your schedule is going to change, and we just have to be honest with ourselves about that. When I was working at Radio Shack, I would go home after working probably sometimes 12-hour days, but I wanted to put a video out. I wanted to put a photo out. I, I really felt that passion, and I wasn't getting paid for it then. I wasn't making any money on the side from doing Instagram. I was thinking to myself, well, I got 30,000 followers, but I don't know if I make any money off of this right now. Maybe like enough to pay for my extra dinner nights or something, but it wasn't really there yet. And the biggest thing is just seeing the end goal, knowing that what you're putting out there, if it's authentic, if it's what you love, and it's what you love in the process, your audience will see that too. And eventually that's going to work for you because your lifestyle change will eventually allow you to be able to make this content work because you love to do it. If you were gonna go home and watch Netflix because you love to do it, turn whatever you need to do as far as content and what you love in your style to make you just as excited to go home to put that together just as it would be Netflix. So thinking of things throughout the day and always using different methods throughout the day that you, don't, you think you may not have time, there's different ways to gain inspiration that way. So if you're out and you're like, well, I actually don't have any time to edit today. I don't have an extra hour. Maybe on your lunch break, on your lunch break, use that hour that you have for your lunch break to be able to go walk around and gain inspiration from the artwork around you. See what other people are doing. See how much people are on their phones. If you, I've peered over one time and I'm like, wow, that person's using Facebook still, and they're my age. You don't. Sometimes you're just you're. You don't know things until you start opening your eyes. It's all about perspective. And there's little pieces of the puzzle that you can put together if you find those moments everywhere and you want it bad enough. And if you love the process, you'll get there 100%. And staying ahead. The market has the answers. And what I say about that is a lot of times people are like, well, what do I need to do to get more followers? Or what do I need to do to grow my business past this? I'm like plateauing or, you know, social media is just so hard nowadays. And the biggest thing is sometimes, as much as we don't want to admit that it's ourselves, and it's not always a bad thing, but sometimes it's, we have to find it within ourselves. It's, it's the market. The market tells us all the answers. Any sort of person that you're trying to reach out there, the more and more you pay attention to them and what they need and their perspectives, your audience, it's going to have the answers. If they don't respond well to something, it's okay. Because eventually, in the long run, if you're out there listening to exactly what they're responding to, whether it be good or bad, you're still communicating with them. You're still connecting with them. And you're still growing with that exact audience. And that's what we need to keep doing, is not focusing on those likes, not focusing on just the, just the statistics. Focus on your story. Focus on how you can put that content together to really tell that in the right way and get the feelings and reactions that you need to really tell your message. So listening to your audience is just huge. And like we were saying before about things like TikTok and LinkedIn, paying attention and being aware of the platforms before they get big. Because Instagram was a lot easier probably to get big five, six years ago, but now it's really hard because there's so many of us out there. And if we pay attention ahead of time and we really are putting ourselves out there in these different ways and making these videos consistently, there's always a way to stay ahead. So if you've never tried Rush, I definitely, definitely encourage you to try it out on your phone, try it out on your computer, on your iPad, anything that you'd like to edit on. Get out there and basically, if you have a story, if you have even like five clips that you even took from Blog Her today or yesterday, maybe put together a little highlight reel. Try and throw it onto a timeline. See what you can create out of it and really just get a feel for, okay, I have video footage and I want to make something that's going to feel relevant. I want to make something that's going to feel what I want my audience to feel. And that's the biggest thing that I would say is connecting with people and connecting with everything that you want to actually express is the biggest way to actually build your brand and build your 
any personal goal that you're working towards. And if you guys have any questions for me about what I spoke about today, please, please speak up. Right. So basically, um, her question, if, uh, it's just hard to hear, but it's okay. Um, if, if, her, if she's making an edit like on Premiere or on Rush and um, putting it onto YouTube, uh, is it going to look the same as when you're editing on that? And what it comes down to, which is kind of tough actually, is it's the screen that you're watching it on. And that's what can be kind of deceiving in a sense because our, our phone screens are actually really good quality. And so are like if you edit on a MacBook or anything like that, they're great quality. quality. So keep that in mind when you're um, color correcting. That's what the best thing that I would say is keep in mind where your audience is going to be watching it on. Like, to be honest, if I, I have made a video specifically for my Mexico audience at one point because I travel to Mexico a lot, and I know that their screens are like not always great quality, right? Because they were, they were telling me, they're like, oh, well, I don't know if I, I saw your whole video because something happened. So I would say you really just have to kind of keep in mind and think outside the box of how, where the video is going to go and kind of tweak your uh, color corrections based on that. Because if it's going to go on like a, a, like a not so good um, screen, sometimes it'll be like contrasty, right? And really dark. So you'll kind of just have to change and kind of anticipate where it's going to be seen. But a good in-between, with Rush especially, they have those uh, filters that you can adjust the intensity. And I think that that's really huge because you'd be able to kind of focus on how much you'd want to kind of dial back maybe a little bit, <laughs> for sure. You're welcome. What's up? Right. 100%. Yeah, so now with the actual music editing on Rush, you're able to see the waves, right? And like the beats and the changes. That's what I really love about it because you can actually zoom in. And so your phone screen is kind of small, right? So on Rush, being able to zoom in really, really deep, you can see exactly where your beats hit and you'll be able to take and point and edit right on those cuts. Yeah, and it, the great thing is, is too, they have like a, a way that to click on your timeline and kind of create like a locking mechanism. So anything that you, you drag to it, it'll automatically lock and pin to that. Yeah, for sure. Right. So how often do you go back to keeping a content that you don't really care about or like getting rid of old content in general? Right. I think that's a really, really good question, honestly, because it can go twofold, right? Depending on your brand. Because some people, when they go on your YouTube and they, I find myself personally, one of my favorite videographers that I learned and just watch um, some of his stuff, I actually found it really, really cool that he left his very first edit that he's ever made on his YouTube. And being able to see somebody's progression, it's almost like being able to see their entire story without having to tell it, right? And so I think being able to have that old content and almost revisiting it, and you could even remake an edit from one of your old contents or even take it take it, and then take three of your old video edits and even do like a funny video off of that and being like three of my best moments are like three of my worst moments <laughs> and things like that. So getting creative and just ba basically using that realm of anything you can do with your older videos can actually still add value today. I think it's a really good way to look at it for sure. Do I have certain where what? I would say that I do look at it consistently certain times of the year, 100%, because it's great to really stay on track by knowing where you're at, right? Because we don't want to just get too ahead of, ourselves, ahead of ourselves and keep the ball rolling without having to look back at our, our certain time, our timeline essentially of where we've been and how, how we've been progressing, because that'll allow us also to see how we can continue to move forward and also a pace that maybe your audience is enjoying. Definitely. Does anybody else have it? Yep. Uh, it, so now Rush, you can actually run it um, even for iPhone as well too, iPhone and Android, and then also on the Mac and Windows. Yeah, at least. So. Yep. Pretty, pretty compatible all across the board. 
Yeah, so Rush is, the greatest thing about Rush is you can actually take your Rush project and if you are just ready to go into Premiere, you can import it right into Premiere and you can continue to edit it on Premiere. So that's a huge, huge thing, especially if you're on the go and you don't have your laptop. Get it right into Rush, get it started, get it going. And if you have to put it into Premiere later, you can definitely do that. Um, right now, I don't believe it works the other way, unfortunately. But um, you can definitely see, so if you've used Premiere before, you'll see a lot of what you are used to as far as like just little things in Premiere that you'll be able to kind of incorporate in an easier way in Rush. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, the new operating system, I believe, shouldn't affect it just because it still, can, uh, it still has the same like OS features and everything like that. I believe it just has just better like other options that won't affect Rush. Yeah, as far as I know, there shouldn't be any issues on that. Definitely. Does anybody else have any questions? Cool. So, I, oh, yeah, go. No worries, no worries. Yeah, so you can, from in the Rush program, it'll actually allow you right there to push a share button and it'll show up right on YouTube with everything you've programmed in there. So you won't even have to go into YouTube and edit and uh, put that video in there yourself. You can do it directly from Rush and you'll see your link and it's ready to go in live. Oh. Oh, to your website. Yes, you can definitely um, have the embed code from YouTube, but eventually I think that that's something that we should work on 100%. I'll, I'll talk to the team about that. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Anybody else? Yep. Is it uh, okay? So it's a it's a monthly service, um, but it's it's great because it goes right in with the um, the Creative Cloud. So if you've been used to Adobe before, you open open up your Creative Cloud, you can give it a try right in there. Yep. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Oh, one last time. One more? One more time, sorry. <laughs> oh, I think I can. How does it rush integrate with the third parties? Yeah, so they, like I was saying with like YouTube, uh, Instagram, and Facebook, yeah, they integrate directly, um, but I, we may be working on more like other ones in the future, especially as like the social media platforms are changing and stuff to integrate directly into those social media platforms. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that would be that would be great. We could talk on, talk about it like off, <laughs> so I could hear you better too. <laughs> cool, cool. Thank you guys so much again for taking the time. I had a ton of fun talking to you guys. It's it's been my first time in New York in a really long time, so it's been really great to be here and speak with you guys. If you have any other questions, feel free to talk to me off the off the mic and anything like that. So you have a great rest of the conference as well. Thank you.